That, that, that is enough said. Happy Saturday, Heat Nation. Ernest here, and I am back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Hope you guys could like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We're knocking on the door to 4,000 subscribers, so I need you guys' help to get there now. Uh, I'm ready to rock and roll, you guys, on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Some may not like the topic today, because we're back on trade rumors. Now, it's like I've said before, you guys, especially currently in the offseason right now with not a lot of topics to go by. You know, we got the draft coming up in two weeks, uh, but there's nothing really set in stone there. So I just wanted to talk about something that's currently going on right now. And uh, that's a Jimmy Butler rumor. Now, this comes from Nick Friedel. Uh For those of you who don't know who Nick Friedel is, he's a very highly uh, rated NBA uh, reporter. Uh, he's been on ESPN a lot of times. He works very closely with the Golden State Warriors. And I'm going to read you a quote that Nick Friedel said uh, on uh, the game, 97.5 on X. Uh, he basically said that Jimmy Butler's name has been popping up a lot in conversations in the Golden State Warriors front office. They are very interested in trading for Jimmy Butler because they know this is the last ride for Steph Curry. So uh, they feel that if they can put Jimmy Butler with Steph Curry and a combination of Draymond Green and have some good players around them, they can maybe make a push for the Western, you know, for, uh, for the West side next year, maybe to the NBA Finals. You know, they know that Jimmy Butler doesn't play 82 games, but they feel that with Jimmy Butler, with Steph Curry, and Draymond Green, maybe some damage can be done in the playoffs. Who knows? You got to make a push. Uh, Nick Friedel did say that um, I think it's a fit on paper, but I'm not sure how he fits into that locker room as the alpha personality that he is. And I don't know if after all the wear and tear on his knees, the Warriors would want to give him that extension. And that's really what it is, you guys. There's been a lot of different teams that have come up. You know, you've had the Philadelphia 76ers. You've had the New York Knicks names come up in the conversation. It's mainly been the 76ers. The, the LA Lakers name has come up before. There are going to be teams that are willing to give Jimmy Butler an extension because A, they're desperate and they want to make a push. So they feel that they trade for a Jimmy Butler, it might help. But a lot of teams know what they're getting with Jimmy Butler. Um, now, when you're talking about a trade package, the Golden State Warriors do have very interesting trade assets. So let's say in this hypothetical situation, the Golden State Warriors and the Miami Heat actually do talk trades because the report is that as of June 30th, when teams can start talking, the Golden State Warriors, or even before that, excuse me, for the draft from what I'm hearing, the Golden State Warriors may make an offer to the Miami Heat for Jimmy Butler. Um, the reported offer that I was hearing is uh, Andrew Wiggins, you know, salary filler. Jimmy Butler's making $48 million next season. The Miami Heat are a first apron team. So since Golden State's also a first apron team, you have to remember, you got to fall under that 125% over or under $100,000 rule. Boring rule to talk about, but that's the new CBA. Now, uh, Golden State could release Chris Paul out of his $30 million non-guaranteed contract. If they do that, they'll get under the first apron line. So this trade that I'm talking about is all depending on what a, uh, tax line Golden State's on. So let's say they get rid of Go uh, Chris Paul. This will give them a little more flexibility to take on Jimmy Butler. So, and obviously if Golden, Strait, uh, if Golden State trades for Jimmy Butler, I'm sure they'll get rid of Chris Paul because of the whole tax bracket, the first and second apron. I'm sure you don't want to pay ta huge taxes on a guy like Chris Paul, obviously. now. You're obviously going to have to take a pack of uh, Andrew Wiggins for a salary filler. Now, they also have some interesting players. They got Jonathan Kaminga. They got Moses Moody. They got Gary Payton. Um, they also got their rookie, uh, Brandon Pazemski. Uh, they have a lot of interesting players that they can trade for. They also can attach two future first-round draft picks in a trade. 
You know, they can give Miami their 2026 first round, their 2028 first round. The Heat have traded some draft picks. There's some years that we don't have draft picks, so this could help out. Um, so a package like that, let's say if it's a package of Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Andrew Wiggins, um, Gary Payton the second if he opts in, or even Moses Moody. You may have to add another player for a contract filler. You send Jimmy Butler, you get some contract, you know, get some first round draft picks with that. Now look, if you're building for the future, if your thought process is okay, we're we're that's it. You know, the Jimmy Butler build is over. We're building for the future. Of course, this trade would work. But I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't think this build is done. I don't think that it's time to blow this team up. I understand that Jimmy Butler hurt his MCL in the play-in game. I understand that we had a lot of injuries last season. So to say injuries are the reasons why we didn't go this far may sound like an excuse. I get that. But we have to remember something. This current roster on paper was only four games down from the second seat. Their very best player missed 22 games. Their young franchise piece missed 40 games. They had 37 different starting lineups in an 82 game season. And they were still four games down from the second seed. They also traded for a guy mid season that got injured as well towards the end of the year. I'm not trying to make an excuse for this team, you guys. I'm trying to say that I'm just not ready to give up on this Miami Heat team. I understand some people are going to call me deluded. They're going to say, oh my God, this team can't do it. They've proven they can't do it in the regular season. Fine. But I will say this. Let's say, because apparently Donovan Mitchell might sign an extension with Cleveland. There may not be another player available for an offseason trade. This may be the same team that we're looking at going into October, which would drive Heat fans crazy. Trade deadlines isn't until February. Moves can still be made, or maybe a surprise can happen, and you'll see a trade in the draft. We don't know where this Miami Heat team is going, but what I will say is that with this roster, you give me a Jimmy Butler that can play 65 to 70 games in the regular season, if that, but give me that. If I can see 65 to 70 games from Jimmy in the regular season, if Tyler Hero can play 75 games, enough with this injury stuff, you get a full training camp with Terry Rozier, allow Rozier to do his thing. Tyler Hero commits to being the sixth man off the bench. You draft a player at number 15 with some size, a Kel L. Ware, a Zach Eady, a Kyle Filipowski, maybe someone else that you can play coming off the bench for Bam or a side Bam. You bring back some of these players like DeLon Wright. Let Josh Richardson come back. Maybe re-sign Haywood Highsmith or use your $5.2 million exception on a guy like Russell Westbrook, a Jonas Valanciunas if he takes it, somebody that can help you, a wing player. I feel that with this roster, you guys, with everything I just said, we're a top four team in the East. But are we truly a championship contender? Are we the favorites in the East? Probably not. That's the reason why Heat fans want to see a trade. But a trade like this is basically waving the white flag. Trading with Golden State is saying we're restarting. Jonathan Kaminga is a great piece. Golden State has some great pieces. But if you're making that trade, you're giving up on this build. And I don't feel that this build is ready to be brought down. I honestly don't feel that. So I want to hear from you, Heat fans. Do you think that it's time to blow up this build? And if an offer like this were to come from Golden State, would you take it? Or do you feel like me? It's not over yet. I still believe in the team. Maybe I'm deluded. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. But like I said, trade that line ain't until February. So you can see how this team starts off the season. And if you don't like it, you can make a trade during the regular season. It can happen. We've seen it before. So I want to hear from you, Heat fans. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Whether you're at home relaxing or whether you're going to go out and live the night. 
Make sure to watch the video. Make sure to like it. Subscribe. Y'all know the drill. Enjoy your weekend. And that is enough said. Stay positive, Heat fans.